what you're going to see today in terms of the safe and together model, one of the things that's very important about it is it's how do we take the information we've learned about working with perpetrators, working with victims, working with kids, and landing it inside the child welfare or the child serving system. What kind of skills do people need if they're going to be a child welfare worker around domestic violence? Well, clearly there needs to be collaboration between victim services and child welfare. That's, that's a given in my mind. But we also have to look at the folks who are in the child serving systems. Child welfare could be guardian ad, guardians ad litem. It could be folks in, in juvenile court, dependency court. It could be anybody doing evaluations with families. And we can ask ourselves, what's the basic skill sets they need around domestic violence to do their job? Not to be victim advocates, not to be better intervention staff, but to do their job in a reasonable way within the scope of what they do. And part of really the underlying message of the Safe and Together model, one of the things that really drives it, is that when we talk about child welfare systems, and this is my belief, you may not agree with this, that my belief is that child welfare systems cannot accomplish their mission around safety, permanency, and well-being of kids without some basic competencies in domestic violence. And those competencies look like interviewing, documentation, case planning, not being victim advocates, not being better intervention folks, but if we're going into homes looking at safety, permanency, and well-being of kids, how can we do that when we know domestic violence is such a factor in some of these families without some baseline skills around that, some baseline competencies. So you're going to hear how the Safe and Together model is really a model that's about building skills and competencies and about improving cross-systems collaboration. 